We're at Coronado State Monument. We're in the town of Bernalillo, which is about 15 miles north of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Coronado State Monument was established in 1931, and it was established to commemorate the first contact between Europeans and Native Americans in our area by a, a Spanish expedition led by Francisco Vesquez de Coronado, who arrived here in the July-August period of 1540. Coronado was a young man about, he was in his 30s, and he was a city councilor of Mexico City. He was the protege of the viceroy of uh, New Spain at the time, Antonio de Mendoza. Viceroy Mendoza chose him to lead this expedition to the north. They had heard rumors of treasure and at least large populations to the north, and so they were uh, coming north to investigate these rumors. They left and they traveled north about 1,500 miles. And it, well, he came here because he knew there was a large river and a large population of uh, people who farmed. And uh, one of the things that he had to do was feed his army. He had about 2,500 people with him. He had to feed all those people. From this point, about 30 miles down the river, there were 20 villages on either side of the river, spread out about every three or four miles. And all these villages were inhabited by Tewa-speaking people. That would be the language today of Sandia Pueblo and Isleta Pueblo, or farther north of Taos. And so the, uh, this was the, what the, he called Tihuesh province, the language of the Tewa-speaking people. And uh, in those 20 pueblos, there were probably around 15 to 20,000 people. He took over one of their towns or pueblos, and he made that his camp. Uh, the, we know that it was on the west side of the river, a little bit farther south. There is a site in Petroglyphs National Monument that is tentatively uh, identified as his camp, which he called Alcanfor. We're in the South Plaza, but typically in our area you would have two plazas, a, a, a South Plaza, which is where we're at, and a North Plaza. And inside the plazas you'd have kivas, square ones like that one, which is, is just represented by the wall, or square ones like this one, and there's a round one here. And uh, this is the living area. People lived outside most of the time. They didn't have indoor lights or indoor heating, so uh, other than going in their homes to sleep and in bad weather, they spent a lot of their time out, outdoors. And so this here, here would be where the kids played and this would be where the cooking went on. And uh, people talking to each other and all sorts of activities. This is where the processional dances occurred in the, here in the plaza. But surrounding us would have been uh, home, uh, room blocks, the homes of the people that lived here. Again, up to, in our case, 1,200 people living in this one village. Our, our room blocks were up to three stories high and they were stepped. So in other words, the first row of rooms around us would have been one story high. And that might be two rooms deep, and then the next row would be two stories high. And then the next row, three stories high. So that on the outside, you had a three story high wall all the way around, with only a few sally ports where you could access the Pueblo, get in and out. And no windows or doors on the outside. They had to defend themselves. There weren't any military or police forces. They, If they were attacked, it was the men of this Pueblo who provided the defense, maybe getting some help from some of their neighbors. And in the early part of 1541, the Tiwesh War occurs. Uh, basically, Coronado and his men attacked two villages, which they called uh, Mojo and Arenal, and they destroyed those two villages, uh, basically to make the point that they were gonna get their way. This place is possibly the site of Arenal. And if it is, there were 300 Tiwas that were killed here during that little battle. So there's a short campaign, the result of which was basically that all the other Tiwas that lived farther to the south or on the other side of the river fled to the other side of the Sandia Mountains and, and abandoned this area to the, to the Spanish uh, for the next year and a half until they left. He was getting information from different people and hearing rumors again of larger towns, which anything that had a large population they were interested in, and, and other rumors where there might be something uh, that he wanted to find. And uh, this led him out on the plains on a large circuitous route. He didn't really find anything that interested him. He, did, he was one of the first Europeans to see buffalo or bison. But in the fall of 1541, he came back to this camp and um, on the Rio Grande, stayed here through the winter, which was one of the coldest on records. The river has not frozen at all this century or the last century. But when Coronado was here, the Rio Grande froze over hard enough that the Spaniards could ride their horses back and forth across the ice. There were people arguing already in the spring that they should leave. They weren't finding what they were wanting to find. And it was, and they thought they were wasting their time. So uh, in the, that spring, Coronado, who was responsible to make some success out of this, and he felt that responsibility, 
uh, was reluctant to admit defeat and go home. Uh, but one day they were out exercising their horses and he fell off his horse. It tripped in a gopher hole and uh, threw him. And some of the uh, following riders rode over him. They couldn't stop. And one of their horses kicked him in the head, which gave him a severe concussion. And at that point, he, that sort of decided things. He, was, he never really recovered from that. And at that point, he was ready to go home. So they, that's when they gathered up their stuff and they left and went back. Uh, he lived only about 10 more years, died in his 40s in Mexico City. This, this place was abandoned at the time of his expedition and then never really re reoccupied. Uh, but the Tiwas are still in the area, so their, their descendants are still here. And in fact, number, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, upwards of 200,000 people in New Mexico today are, are considered Pueblos. Coronado's expedition was a precursor of many, and basically this period culminates in 1598 with the first permanent settlement in New Mexico, which is led uh, by Juan de Oñate. He brings a group of about 400 settlers to the area, and they settle north of us near uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's the beginning of the modern history of what's uh, called New Mexico.